Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Adrian Monk, Head of Communications and Media at the World Economic Forum, and welcome to this opening press conference for our 2011 Summit on the Global Agenda. Uh, joining me here for the press conference, His Excellency Sultan bin Said Al Mansouri, the Minister of Economy from the United Arab Emirates and co-chair of the Summit on the Global Agenda, and uh, His Excellency Mohammed Omar Abdullah, Under Secretary from the Department of Economic Development here and also co-chair for the summit, and my colleague on the Managing Board of the World Economic Forum, uh, Mr. Borga Brenda, uh, who heads our Government Relations and Constituent Engagement. They'll all be saying a few words uh, about the summit, introducing what we're talking about here and its importance. Uh, afterwards, we'll take a few questions. Everyone is on, I'm afraid, a pretty tight schedule, so we'll have to keep things very much running on Swiss time. Uh, before uh, we launch into uh, their introductions, just a reminder that this is uh, devoted to talking about the topics that we're dealing with here at the summit and the summit itself. If you have anything specific to the brief of any of the gentlemen on stage with me, please feel free to take it up with their staff and representatives who are represented outside. Um, but we will keep things firmly on, on track of what we're doing here in Abu Dhabi. So without further ado, I'm going to ask uh, His Excellency the Minister of Economy for United Emirates to introduce the summit. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. I'll do my, uh, my presentation or uh, speech in English, and then I think most of you do speak English, but if there's any need to do any Arabic also, we will uh, refer to it when it's needed in this case. Uh, I would like to welcome the uh, international and the local media to this very important summit. Uh, this summit, uh, as you all know, uh, is being held now for the fourth time here in the United Arab Emirates. We are very proud as a country and also as a government in terms of our participation in this uh, uh, summit, both the uh, federal government of the, of the United Arab Emirates and also the uh, local government, which is the government of Abu Dhabi this time, is participating in uh, supporting uh, this very important uh, summit. Uh, you probably have also noticed that their uh, participant has increased. Uh, we have uh, 800 participants who are from almost 80 countries who came to join us today to share uh, from their side with the best of expertise in the different fields that they are going to discuss during the councils. Uh, 79 councils are uh, going to be uh, working very hard in the next two days to make sure that uh, proper recommendations are coming out uh, for the different issues that will be handled during this uh, time. Of course, the UAE, one of the major reasons why we went into this is we believe uh, uh, the, in, in that the UAE should be an active participant in addressing a number of uh, urgent issues, uh, whether it is the financial or economic or the uh, food security or renewable energy, we actually are already taking some action with regard to these uh, very important and very critical issues. Uh, meanwhile, also, uh, our participation in this uh, as a country also, uh, to give a, more of a, a guideline toward the younger generation of the United Arab Emirates to be able to participate in a future uh, hopefully also uh, economic forums that will be held in Davos, and that is something that we always encourage from our side. Uh, I would like to welcome the media once again to uh, this very important summit, and I am sure we are going to see each other through the summit. Thank you again. Minister, thank you very much. And now I'd like to call on uh, uh, His Excellency Mohammed Omar Abdullah to introduce his remarks. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, again, uh, I want to welcome you on behalf of the government of Abu Dhabi and this very important occasion. As His Excellency the Minister said, this is the fourth time UAE have hosted this important event. And we are delighted to have a representation from about 80 countries in our country. Of course, we are working jointly with the federal government to ensure we represent UAE in a good manner. As you know, uh, now uh, we, uh, shortly we will uh, celebrate the 40th, the 40th uh, national, the 40th national day for the UAE. And it happened that this is the fourth, uh, the 40, uh, the 40th, uh, 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 for the, for the, for the summit. This is the 40, 40 years has passed for this, has passed for this summit. So it's coincidentally has happened. And we are delighted to, uh, 
to take this uh, occasion to enhance our relationship with uh, this important organization and to demonstrate the pace of development in our country, uh, which represent the uh, wisdom of our leadership uh, in UAE. So uh, again, I want to welcome you and I hope during this uh, coming uh, two days you will uh, be able to uh, interact with the leaders in area of businesses and, and, uh, and academies and uh, uh, wish you all the best, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, Bulga Brenda, my colleague at the World Economic Forum, can tell you a little bit more about how the forum uh, organizes this summit and how it integrates into the work of the forum more widely. Thank you, Adrian. And uh, ministers, thank you um, for your contribution here today, but also uh, thank you to their excellencies for being coaches for this uh, very unique summit gathering the 800 leading experts in the world from uh, academia, business, international organizations, governments, and civil society. And I think this uh, summit this year takes place against the backdrop of unprecedented challenges. Not only has the share of challenges uh, increased compared to last year, but also, indeed, the complexities. And um, the complexities uh, are some uh, an area where we're going to have a deep dive uh, this uh, year. And having more, having 79 consuls, 79 consuls, with more than 800 consul members here, ranging from areas of uh, sovereign debt to um, currency issues, to the nexus of um, water, climate change, and food, also mentioned uh, by the ministers, are some of the examples. What we will do in the course of these two days is also develop new models, new models on how to tackle these unprecedented challenges that I just mentioned. Because we are seeing that um, it is necessary um, to also deal with global issues at the global level. We know that a lot of the institutions that were created after the Second World War, the Bretton Woods institutions and the UN, uh, is, um, was developed uh, for different kind of challenges that we're seeing today. The uniqueness of uh, this largest brainstorming in the world by um, thought leaders uh, is that we uh, will have a chance also to meet across the councils. If you have a council on climate change that we do have, we'll also of course then meet with the council on water, we'll meet on the council that we have for food security. The council will also then have a lunch with the council on disaster management, disaster preparedness. So we are able to link those uh, challenges and issues together. I think that's very unique. And also that we do it in a multi-stakeholder context. Is business meeting with governments and governments meeting with international organizations and again with civil society. And I think maybe what, um, is, what is more and more important globally is that all the stakeholders are gathered together. Today, it is governments with, meeting with governments and is business with business. And the uniqueness of the World Economic Forum is that we bring experts from all walks of life together and can have a uh, look at the challenges from that angle. Thank you. Borga, thank you very much. And just to, I suppose, emphasize and bring home the fact that we call this the, you know, the world's biggest brainstorming. And we do that because it brings together this multidisciplinary group. All of the people who are here today are you know, regular speakers throughout the world at different specialist conferences and congresses in their own disciplines. But actually bringing them into one place together with people from 79 different areas is a very extraordinary and unusual thing. We think it's unique. 
And just to give you an example, last night, just getting off the bus, you had one of the world's leading neuroscientists in conversation with a climate scientist and one of the world's leading technologists. And in facilitating those kind of conversations is one of the really unique things about this meeting and one of the really important opportunities to give people a chance to think both inside their areas at the very highest level and also a little bit outside the box through those serendipitous conversations they might have with people who otherwise they would never come across except through uh, the work of yourselves in the media. So we've got a little period for some questions. If I could ask you to uh, make your questions specific to the meeting, please. Uh, if you'd like to take anything up specific to any of these gentlemen's individual briefs, then please feel free to do so offline. Could you just tell us who you are and your news organization? And uh, just looking at the gentleman in the front, and there's a gentleman on the side there. So, sir, can you just tell us your name and where you're from? Good morning. This is uh, Abdullah Zabi. I'm chief editor of uh, Economic and Abu Dhabi TV. Well, my question will be for Mr. to His Highness Sultan and also Mr. Brandy. It's about how the summit agenda, how the summit agenda will affect the economy world in this particular time. Okay. Well, I think as you have uh, heard it, uh, these are the best brains of the world are here to deal in a very sort of uh, active way in detailed manner also the issues and the problems which are happening right now in the world uh, world economy in general and, and particular with regard to the financial situations uh, in different regions of the world. The way it is done, and this is how the summit's uh, procedures have been always uh, done, is this is actually used and utilized as a road to Davos. Davos is going to be in January. The recommendation based on the meetings of the different councils will be carried to the leaders who are usually, a large number of leaders usually attend Davos. These kind of ideas and thoughts and recommendations will be discussed also through uh, the Davos uh, meeting and then afterward it will be hopefully uh, fed into the right decision makers within the uh, different uh, countries who will be attending uh, Davos. Thank you. Uh, I would like to underline what the minister just said, that this summit is the intellectual backbone and the council members are intellectual backbone of the World Economic Forum, shaping the agenda no for Davos, but also shaping the agenda on the work that the World Economic Forum uh, is doing uh, on the G20 agenda and also in the preparations for uh, Rio plus 20. And I would like this opportunity to also um, make a compliment to uh, the government of UAE for the leadership the government has shown in the G20 uh, work. We have just signed an MOU between the World Economic Forum and the government of Mexico where uh, the World Economic Forum is going to give important uh, content input through three task forces or four task forces in preparations for Mexico's G20 presidency next year. And then it's very pertinent that also all the agenda councils, the 79, will um, the work day and the results of what they're coming up with during these two days will also be important input in this process. And the feedback from people last night when I met with the 100 um, um, almost 100 uh, key people of the councils where that, of course, also UAE is no more and more a hub for education, research, and also um, uh, then uh, entrepreneurship. So it's a very uh, good place to have uh, this um, summit. On the economy, economic topics, there will um, also be uh, clear interactions between uh, the councils. As I mentioned, we have a council looking at the fiscal crisis. We also have councils that are looking at the bank sector. We have councils that are um, having a tough look on youth unemployment, inclusive growth. And all this has to be seen uh, and looked at in a holistic way. If you don't fix the banks, you cannot fix the economy. If you don't fix uh, the current currency instabilities, you will not fix the global economy. And the overall team is to develop a model where you can avoid a second dip and revive inclusive economic growth. 
Thanks, Bill. <clears throat> I would just say this meeting serves a double purpose for us. It's both a temperature taking of 800 of the world's leading experts in a whole range of different fields. And that feeds into what we do for Davos because we have program team members attached to all these councils getting the feedback from them and really getting insights from them that they can translate into programming for our meeting in January. And it also serves as a long-term uh, agenda setting meeting where people can talk about cross-disciplinary goals, how, for example, insights from neuroscience can inform debates on economic motivation, how we can use that in policy terms, and where we need to be doing work in order to actually provide the intellectual content to help those kind of things come to fruition. So it's a very interesting uh, meeting, and I know from a media perspective, to some degree, a little frustrating because the conversations they have in those, in those councils are very intense and direct, especially amongst the councils. They spend a lot of time talking amongst themselves. I know we'll be doing our best to get them out to try and talk to you too. Um, gentleman in the corner. And uh, just a logistical question. Just a logistical question, please. Could we have the names of these experts and uh, guest speakers, please? Uh, sure, I, there's I, a participant's handbook, and I'm sure Lucy J. Kennedy, who's the lady right behind you in the white, okay. will be very pleased to give okay. you those okay. uh, details. Thank so you. Thank and Mr. Brenda, it's usually my, I, I congratulate you on your modesty. You only give your last name. Uh, this is unusual for a journalist to experience because people always want to tell you everything about themselves. Could I have your full name and your title, please? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for making me aware. Um, my, my first name is um, Berge, but uh, let's say B-O-R-G-E, Berge. I'm Managing Director at the World Economic Forum in charge of Government Relations and Constituents. Thank you for the opportunity to share that. <laughs> I did introduce him at the beginning, but I know I probably rushed over the... Uh, I didn't go into spelling, so my apologies for that. Um, two gentlemen on the front row, lady at the back, lady on the front. So we'll probably, on the time, mush a few questions together, if we may. So. Your Excellency is uh, Himendra Kumar from Gulf News. My question is to both Excellencies present here. Uh, the question is... Um, what is uh, the UAE doing uh, in order to uh, safeguard its interests uh, should the European uh, debt crisis go out of hand? Uh, uh, we have only been seeing uh, uh, new posturings, but no conclusive or decisive action uh, from among Eurozone member countries, and uh, the markets uh, worldwide are sitting on the edge. Now, if the matters go out of hand, what are the preventive steps uh, UAE and Abu Dhabi in particular have taken to, uh, uh, to, to mitigate the impact? That's a fascinating question. I'm sure someone here will be talking about it, but I don't know if it actually reaches into what we're discussing at the summit. Can I just ask of that gentleman? This, and a, this is a area of Sure, discussion. and it's the kind of issue I'm sure that the minister deals with in his everyday work, but here at talking about the summit, we are... Um, trying to stay very much in, in the respect of the 800 people we've gathered together. Can I just ask the gentleman next to you if he has a question? Thank you. Good morning. My question is there's uh, going to be another World Economic Forum end of the month. So uh, how is uh, the outlook of each of these two forums? Uh, Borga can probably explain the difference to you, um, the difference in topic. The meeting you're referring to is we're having a meeting in two in weeks Jordan. in Jordan, Jordan, which is a special meeting on uh, job, uh, jobs and employment in the Arab world. Borga, do you want to speak a little more so, to that? So um, what we are having here is an annual meeting. We have three annual meetings at the World Economic Forum. We have an annual meeting in Davos. Then we have a summer doubles taking place in China every year, and then we have the annual meeting for the global agenda taking place here. Uh, it's uh, one of the three large global meetings of the World Economic Forum here shaping the intellectual agenda. The special meeting in Jordan taking place in, um, in almost two weeks is on job creation and economic growth in the Arab world. It's a regional summit for the Arab world that we also have every year. Of course, there is also a lot of interest connected to this summit, as it is to this summit, because of um, um, 
the, the keen interest for the region and especially on job creation and reviving uh, economic growth. So exactly, this is a very, um, uh, as Borger said, this this summit really is our kind of global intellectual kind of meeting where we bring together this diverse field of experts. The meeting in Jordan is going to focus very much on one regional <coughs> issue, which is the importance of job creation. And it's going to be much less about policy and long-term planning and, and strategizing and interdisciplinary work, and much more about how can businesses, government, and NGOs and civil society get together meaningfully to create actual job opportunities now across the region. So it's much more uh, directly focused, very much more similar to our, our uh, usual type of meeting. This meeting has a really special character, which is uh, a little hard to get across unless you've actually been into one of the councils. And my, uh, it was my privilege in the first year when I was a professor to actually participate in one of them. And it really is a very a different type of meeting that we're engaged in here. And I'm, uh, it's the kind of thing that might make news in 10 years' time. So my apologies if you're feeling a little frustrated. Can I just ask the lady there in the, in the back and the lady there to uh, contribute? And then we're going to have to, I'm afraid, move on because uh, schedules are tight. Mirna uh, Sleman from Dow Jones. Uh, Your Excellency, Mr. al -Mansuri. Uh, when talking to the guys outside, the delegates, uh, what's on your mind the biggest challenge facing the UAE economy? Um, and um, just in, in, in case things just uh, really blow up outside in Europe and especially in Greece, what's going to be the impact on the banks? Are you asking banks to take extra provisions uh, starting now or are you going to wait until things really happen? Thank you. Okay, and, and we'll just uh, take the lady on the yeah. front, if we may. Martina from Reuters, uh, good morning. Uh, I have a question for His uh, Excellency Al Mansouri. I want to ask uh, how you think um, the uh, Arab world should react to the European and the US crisis and uh, how you think uh, they are handling uh, the situation at the moment. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, to start with the challenges uh, which we uh, foresee in the UAE economy, and actually it is similar to what we see also all over the world and that's how to uh, align the current situation toward hopefully uh, future growth. This is a challenge for all nations of the world. But what is good about this country being uh, also uh, small in the size of uh, the area, but quite big and strong in the economic side and relative to its size, is that we have managed early uh, 2008 to uh, set up the proper structure to address any kind of financial issues as they develop. Uh, a committee was at that time, of course, uh, proposed and was established uh, by which myself as Minister of Economy, the Minister of uh, Finance uh, was there, and also the uh, Governor of the Central Bank. And I would like to stress this again because this is a continuous uh, committee that we hold our meeting on a regular basis to address any issues. What have uh, been achieved through that committee is that we have been able to monitor the uh, situation at the banks on a very regular basis to address any issues that might arise as they happen and be able also to uh, move on uh, with the providing for the right solutions. Meanwhile, also this issue of the crisis that happened in uh, 2008 and on uh, have also taught us to uh, restructure our economy and uh, focus more on certain sectors as opposed to some of the other sectors where our economy was uh, moving much uh, bigger in terms of its participation. And uh, hence now uh, we have sort of restructured it in a way that we aim to uh, increase the participation of sectors such as uh, tourism, industries, trade, uh, financial services, and many others in a way to, and also logistics, because that's a very important issue which is also being discussed here, uh, to the way that uh, we are able to fulfill the uh, potential that we have as a country toward also serving the rest of the region. The uh, second uh, question, or second part of the uh, questions was, uh, both of them actually were dealing with the uh, crisis and the current situation in uh, both Europe and uh, uh, the US. Uh, as I said, the team is ready. If there are any issues that might arise which uh, concerns our financial institutions, this committee is always uh, ready to address uh, these issues and to be able to handle any uh, crisis that might uh, happen within our financial institution, which I do not foresee any, uh, due to uh, my understanding, our exposure there is uh, very small. 
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. My thanks to our co-chairs and to Mr. Brenda. We have to move on to our plenary session, so I hope that you'll have an opportunity to talk to as many of our participants as possible and uh, get uh, some insights into the kind of work they're doing. Thank you very much.